Hey everyone, it's Rachel Wolfson here with Coin Telegraph, and today I'm here with a very special guest, Anthony Scarmucci. Did I pronounce your last name correctly? Rachel, you're doing great. Okay. You, you had me at special. Great, yes. So he is obviously the founder of Skybridge Capital. So good to have you here today. I couldn't be happier to be here, and thank you guys for coming to the event. Uh, we're we're sold out uh, because of people like you, so I greatly appreciate it, Rachel. Yeah. And uh, uh, we're off to a good start. We had the Prime Minister this morning, Sam Bankman-Fried has sp spoken, uh, and I think we're underway to a great event. Yeah, so far so good. Um, so Anthony, can you tell me a little bit about some industry trends that we're seeing right now? Well, I mean, there's a lot going on at the same time. You know, you've got a war going on and you've got the specter of U.S. inflation and so that's curbed growth in the United States and you've seen the NASDAQ and most of the indexes sell off you know and they're, they're at that correction sort of 10% level right now which is affecting the cryptocurrency markets and if you just would, did an overlay of the NASDAQ and the cryptocurrency markets they are unbelievably correlated for right now so I think that that's creating a lot of churn and pain in the markets while that's happening billions of dollars are going into Web3 the development of Web3, uh, the formulation of Layer 1 tokens, which will ultimately be used as these platforms for transactions across the world. And so I'm long-term very bullish. I'm long-term very excited about where everything is going. But I think short-term we're going to have some issues here and some headwinds as a result of the post-COVID-19 situation, the war, and the specter of inflation and the supply chain issue. So all of that's mixed into the near term. I try to caution people, you know, there's a, there's a reason why the dead people at Charles Schwab have the best returns, okay? So if you look at the accounts at Charles Schwab, what accounts do the best? It's the people that are dead. Why? Because they're not doing anything. They're staying patient, right? It isn't until the estate planners get in there and they start ripping up those accounts. So I try to tell people have a long-term thinking process about crypto. It's very, very early stages, but you're going to see massive things happening in this market over the next five years. Right. And we recently witnessed a very relevant event, actually, with Fidelity allowing, you know, the Bitcoin 401k. So I want to get your thoughts on Seismic that. Seismic event. So I would not understate that event. I put that out on Twitter yesterday. Uh, remember what Fidelity did to the U.S. stock market. When the 401ks were developed, Fidelity said, okay, uh, we're one of the larger asset managers. We're going to use our sales and distribution platform, our great money management skills, and we're going to introduce the average investor to the notion of owning stocks and mutual funds. And so I predict that Fidelity will do for Bitcoin and possibly other cryptocurrencies down the road what they did for the U.S. stock market in the 80s and into the early 90s. And so this is a transformational seismic thing. They have $2.4 trillion in retirement accounts, custody that fidelity. Just imagine a small sliver of that, one, two, three percent, moving into, into Bitcoin. And that doesn't even include the additional potential investors. And of course, Skybridge, uh, we will be offering that to our clients as soon as we can. Awesome. In terms of and our, 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 our employees, I meant to say. Right, mean, yes. right, right. In terms of a timeline with the Fidelity news, I mean, Skybridge will be offering that to employees, as you mentioned. Yes. But when do you think we're going to really see that have mainstream adoption? I think it's kind of being rolled out now. It was just announced, but I don't know when that's actually Yeah, so it's to. being rolled out. I think MicroStrategy is on board already. I think they picked a few... Uh, customers that have lots of custody with them that they're going to do immediately. I think will be, Skybridge will be in the next wave. Uh, but, but what I do think will happen, Rachel, is that there's 73 million people in the United States that own a cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. And so I think there's going to be a tremendous amount of reverse inquiry at corporations large and small. People are going to like, okay, yes, I want that stock and bond offering for my 401k, but where's my cryptocurrency exposure? And so even though there'll probably be a general reluctancy from, let's say, the Fortune 50, the largest corporations in the U.S., because they'll be slow moving, they'll be concerned about the changes, they won't like the volatility, I do think that they're 
employees are going to say, please, I would like to have some cryptocurrency exposure. So Fidelity is in the right place. I predict that others will join Fidelity in that movement. And then, of course, the big elephant in the room is when will the United States have a cash ETF, a Bitcoin cash ETF? I'm hoping that will be by the end of the year. If that happens, uh, you're going to force all of the major financial services institutions to have a Bitcoin cash offering. Uh, I don't think they're going to go into a meeting with somebody and say, well, we have all of this stuff, but we have no ability for you to get Bitcoin or cryptocurrency exposure if it becomes legal from the SEC or the CFTC perspective. Mm -hmm. Now, you say a Bitcoin Cash ETF by the end of this year? I think so, yeah. I mean, I, I'm more bullish about it now because they just... They just approved a uh, Bitcoin futures under the 33 and 34 Act. It's a little bit more stringent than the 40 Act. I also think that the Congress is indicating, lots of people now are indicating that they're more pro-crypto, more cryptocurrency friendly. Remember, you've got 73 million people that own a cryptocurrency. Mayor Suarez was here at a dinner that we hosted last night. He said, how many people do you think you need to vote for you to be the American president? He said, it's between 55 million and 60 million people. And so this is why we all think that the next presidential candidacy, the, the last two standing figures, the Republican and the Democrat, will likely be pro-crypto. Uh, a lot of these people are single-issue voters. Uh, I think that's going to percolate through the Congress. I think you'll eventually see these changes. Right, okay. Positive regulation ahead is a prediction from Skybridge. Right, yeah, well, that's really exciting. Um, now, in terms of, you, you mentioned something during the press conference about tokenization of everything is what it seems like. Yes. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Yes, well, I, I think that we're very, very early. One of the examples I use is, you know, when we were logging on to Web1, and we were using a modem and we had that big fat box computer and it took 35 seconds for the landing page from AOL to come on our computers, it would have been very hard to imagine where we be today with the internet where we're now streaming, hundreds of millions of people are streaming 4K video over the internet. So think about how wide the pipes have gotten, think about how much data that we can push through these pipes. And I think that's going to be what happens with Web3. Right now we can't see all of the wonderful applications that are coming. But one example I gave, imagine you're at the Starbucks, you have a tokenized stock on your phone. We started with stock certificates, then we went to QSIP numbers, and now they're, they're digitally expressed in your account somewhere, like a Morgan Stanley or a Fidelity. But what if they become tokenized? And they're actually on the blockchain, these stock certificates, and you can hold it in your smart wallet on your phone. You could be walking into the Starbucks and talking to the barista, and the barista says, okay, do you want to pay with your Starbucks stock? We're having a share repurchase program here, and we'll give you a 15% discount uh, to buy your cup of coffee with your Starbucks stock. So I think weird things are going to happen. We'll be able to transfer bonds to stocks, stocks to bonds. We'll be able to tokenize just about anything that has value in our world, mm -hmm. and that's going to be wonderfully expansive for our society. Right, yeah. Um, wonderful. So, can you talk a little bit about the Skybridge portfolio? Yeah, sure. Um, are there any altcoins in there, or just Bitcoin? Yes, yes. So, no, we we started with Bitcoin. I told. First of all, I've, I'm a, you know, less my disastrous experience in the White House. I've been in this business for 33 years, and so as an institutional investor and somebody that thinks like an institutionalist, it was very hard to move my clients into cryptocurrency. You know, I had one client a sovereign wealth fund that will remain nameless when I started to add positions in our core account, Bitcoin. He says, okay, I'm going to fire you for this. This is ridiculous. Uh, at the end of the year, he called me. He said, thank you for helping me, pulling me into the future. And so we've got a lot of that going on. So we started with Bitcoin. Then we waded into Ethereum. Then we waded into some other layer one tokens like Solana. We have an Algorand fund. We're very big, very big bulls Algorand's on Algorand. Great. Uh, Silvio McCauley is here. We had dinner with him last night. Um, I think that's going to be one of the real layer one protocols that surfaces to the top. It's just my opinion. Um, and so the, the answer is yes. We have a diversified cryptocurrency portfolio. We have a diversified fund for cryptocurrencies. And we have singular funds. We have a Bitcoin fund, an Ethereum fund, an Algorand fund. And I would imagine that we'll have other token funds uh, 
unfolding in the coming years. Right, right. I hope so. Um, we also have any, if I don't mind me mentioning, uh, sure, we sure. also have an ETF, which is publicly traded securities. It's under the symbol CRPT. Okay. And this is what I call the picks and shovels of the digital innovation of the economy. So this would be things like Marathon Digital, Core Scientific, MicroStrategy, but it would also include something like a PayPal. Uh, these are all companies, a square now known as Block. Right. These are all companies that are geared towards the growth of this ecosystem. Right, right. And that's obviously very important, is the growth of the ecosystem. Um, Anthony, can you kind of touch on your portfolio? Is that possible? Do you sure. hold Bitcoin? Yeah, no, listen, I have about 20% of my net worth in Bitcoin. Uh, I've got, you know, probably four or five percent in Algorand and a couple of percent in ETH. ETH. And this was really born from appreciation. You know, I, I probably started with a four or five percent portfolio. I think my first Bitcoin I bought uh, in 2020 was probably in the 12 to 13,000 zone. Then I was buying some at 16, 18, uh, you know, and but also I bought I've bought coins at 65,000. So right, I'm, not, right. I'm not trying to say that I'm a genius or anything like that. I've just made a macro bet on Bitcoin. And so my portfolio, personally, I probably have almost a quarter of my net worth in this stuff. Okay, great. Um, next question. So Elon Musk recently bought Twitter. Yes. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, so he has a purchase and sale agreement, it looks like, in place for Twitter. He has to close that transaction. So I hope he does. I'm a big Elon Musk fan. I think he's uh, one of the greatest entrepreneurs of all time, not just of our time. Uh, he may be the greatest entrepreneur. He's a bold, visionary thinker. And I think he sees something at, at Twitter uh, that he can transform. Right. And I do think it will happen through the process of decentralization. So he could end up tokenizing Twitter. And he could end up creating authentication over the blockchain for people, eliminating all of this poison and pollution on, on Twitter, and then just coming up with a set of rules related to free speech. Certainly he doesn't want hate crimes and hate invective on Twitter. He certainly doesn't want you to proverbially yell fire in a theater on Twitter. So he doesn't want the nasty side of free speech there. He probably doesn't want the disinformation, all the robotic technology from our political adversaries like Russia putting all of this nonsense and sewage on Twitter. Uh, and so I think, he's, I think he sees what Twitter is uh, and the great things about that public square, but he also sees the more nefarious side of it. And I would make the bet on him. I think he's a transformative figure. I think there's things he could use that uh, sort of Web 1 people would be reluctant to use, Web 3 tools, if you will, that could make Twitter uh, a better platform, a safe platform for people to use, and also something that's dialed more into the free speech elements of our society. Right, I agree, and I hope so, because the imposters on Twitter yeah. And Instagram, I mean. It's I mean, enough already. Yeah, I think people are really much. tired of that. I mean, you right. know, I, I know people that have to take, particularly celebrities, have to take Twitter breaks because they get hit up by all these bots and mm -hmm. all of this nastiness and this mean spiritedness. So right, right. I'm not saying that's going to go away because that's part of human nature, but I do think we can do some things to clean it up. If you're going to say something mean spirited like that, let's authenticate who you are and you know, then you have the opportunity to do it. God right, bless. right. Good point. Um, what can we expect next from Skybridge? It's a really good question. So we're going we're gonna to do this conference, uh, the SALT conference. It'll be crypto heavy, but a little bit broader. That's a typical mandate uh, in September. That's September 12th to the 14th at the Javits Center. Okay. Uh, we expect to be in, be in Singapore at the Marina Bay Sands, November uh, 16th to the 18th, and then eventually back to Abu Dhabi in March. And so uh, Sam and I have a vision of creating four events a year. I'd like to return to the Baja Mar next year. Uh, I think it's a wonderful place. Uh, Sam and I spent some time with Prime Minister Davis this morning talking about the growth here and how exciting it is for the island and the country of the Bahamas uh, to uh, make this a crypto-centric place uh, where the Bahamas will be known in five years as one of the most forward-thinking economic visionary countries. And so we want to be a part of that. Um, and, you know, for myself, I'm looking to expand our assets boost our product line related to digital assets and digital innovation. And I'm having a lot of fun doing it. It's a lot more fun than politics, I can tell you that, Rachel. Yeah. So I'm gonna be spending my time doing this. Great, and um, would you like to give a Bitcoin price prediction? Well, I've always been wrong, so don't go by okay. me. I, I do see 
Bitcoin trending towards 100,000. I would have thought that would have happened last year, but right. I missized the length of COVID. I missized some of the policy things that we did related to COVID in terms of the induction of all of this money that we put into the economy, which has led to the inflation. So I got those things wrong. Uh, but I do think supply demand issues being what they are, let's say there's 20 million coins. You know, there's likely a million or so that have been lost in the early adoption. Uh, we know that there's approximately two-ish million left to be mined or just under two million. Uh, so you're talking about a situation where you have tens of millions of people that will probably own Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, but there's only 20 million coins. Right. To put it in this perspective, JP Morgan said uh, last month there's approximately 53 to 55 million US dollar millionaires. So if, we, if you only have 20 million coins, you don't even have enough Bitcoin for each millionaire to own a full Bitcoin. So I want you to think of the magnitude of that. And of course, with Fidelity now onboarding this and creating this platform of demand for something that has finite supply. Right. Wonderful. Well, Anthony, See, as I said, that the plane went across the horizon. It's good omen. See yeah, that? good omen. We love good omens. Uh, Anthony, it's been a real pleasure. Rachel, thank you thank so much you. for joining us. All right. Great and to be hope here. To see you next time. Thanks for having me Thank on. you.